Good afternoon, everybody. And today we are very pleased to announce Craig McRae has been appointed the senior coach of the Collingwood Football Club. There have only been two coaches this century, and Craig, you are now the, the third, so it's, a, it's a, a, um, a great achievement. So, As most of you know, we changed course in our AFL program 12 months ago. We came close to a premiership in 2018, um, disappointingly close in 2019, and we played finals in 2020. Um, our list is, in, list is in the process of being transformed. We close one window to open another. Key personnel have been recruited to drive this transformation, not the least, our general manager of football, Graham Wright. Craig is joining us in a critical time of this strategy. With our full support and assistance, Craig is to guide and shape this transformation, bring it to life on the field, and ultimately return us to premiership contention. As you will see today, I am joined by Craig and two of the five members of the coaching subcommittee that recommended Craig and the board unanimously agreed, and that is Mark Anderson and Graham Wright. Before I speak further, I would like to acknowledge and, acknowledge and thank the subcommittee. Mark Anderson, Graham Wright, two board members, Paul Curia and Peter Murphy, and last but not least, the fantastic um, input that Luke Ball gave us in this committee. Um, they all worked tirelessly and spent a long time on selecting our new coach, Craig. And you'll hear a little bit more about that. Craig's been in the game as a player and coach for 28 years. He spent 15 years honing his coaching skills as an assistant coach, a VFL coach and in development. He trained as a teacher before committing himself to post-playing post -playing career in the game. He has studied and worked in other clothes, namely rugby league. Craig spent six years developing the kicking skills of our rugby co cousins at Melbourne Storm. He's also served a long apprenticeship in good programs under successful leaders. Amongst those who have influenced Craig have been Lee Matthews, Robert Walls, Alistair Clarkson, Damien Hardwick, and last but not least, our own Nathan Buckley. Craig is the ideal fit for the profile of our playing list. His strengths complement our program. He's being asked to develop a very young squad and mould it into a premiership contender. I welcome Craig back to Collingwood and we'll hand over to Mark and Graham to explain further the process which Craig was selected. We'll then hear from Craig. It's a great day for Collingwood and over to you Mark. Thank you Mark and I also am delighted to welcome Craig as our new senior coach and on behalf of all of our members and fans in particular a huge welcome to you Craig and, and congratulations. It's a great appointment and it's a great day for our club today. We've undertaken a thorough process uh, throughout the search and selection for the head senior coach. It's been an extensive process and like Mark, I'd just like to acknowledge the role of Paul Curia as our football director, uh, Luke Ball, who as everyone knows is a 2010 Premiership player and, and well regarded figure providing that football expertise along with Graham Wright, our GM of football, and certainly our director Peter Murphy as well that was a valuable member of our selection panel. When we commenced the process, we, had, uh, we spent a lot of time to make sure that we got a, a clear and deep set of criteria of what we were looking for in our successful uh, applicant of the head coach. It was a thorough process and we were very clear that we wanted to drive for success, but we needed to drive for success in the right way. And if we found the right person, which we believe we have, that that success would be deli delivered over a sustained period of time. We wanted to do it in a way that ensured that we build a strong foundation for our club and for our team and our playing list and to ensure that we surround that group and in fact Craig with talented individuals that will drive high performance standard right across our football program and into the team as well. At every stage of the process, Craig imp impressed immeasurably around his experience and the success he's had in every single role that he's had across AFL football. And as Mark mentioned, 28 years 
across the industry and 15 years as a coach. He's been a three-time Premiership player at Brisbane. He's been a development coach. He's experienced four years as an uh, assistant coach and development coach in, in, at Richmond in their three Premiership years and is now, as you know, has been working at Hawthorne as an assistant coach uh, across the 2021 season. And importantly, he's coached his own team to grand finals and VFL Premiership success. Success has been part of Craig's football DNA. When we looked across the pathway of the successful Premiership coaches since our own Mick Malthouse delivered us success in 2010, the six Premiership coaches across that time have actually embarked on a similar pathway to that of Craig. And as we work through the process with Craig and to understand what he will bring to us, we were sure that he is someone that will bring to us uh, great progress, uh, a great degree of football acumen, and he'll do that in the right way. His leadership style is impressed immeasurably. He's a trained teacher and educator. He's very relationship orientated, and his style is one that works alongside players to bring out their very best. But importantly in this role, he knows how to make the tough decisions that are required of a successful football program. At every stage in the process, Craig's impressed us, and that's been reinforced as we do our due diligence and spoken to people around the industry that have spoken incredibly highly of Craig and what he'll bring to us as senior coach. But football acumen, insight and IP is a critical part of this role. And as I said, we've had three excellent people on the selection panel that have led that football process. And I'll hand across to Graham Wright to speak about why Craig's been successful from a football perspective. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, and to follow on from your um, assessment of Craig, it was clear from our perspective that he was a unanimous choice uh, to be our next senior coach. Um, as Mark touched on, he's a relationship builder, value, uh, a values-driven dri uh, leader. Um, he understands the modern game, um, uh, understands that, that it's always evolving, um, but is also a proven developer of young people. And, and, and obviously we've got a, a, a young list that I'm sure will benefit from his uh, input on the way through. Um, he's process driven, he's calm, um, he makes calculated decisions and as Mark also stated, he's, he's a proven winner across a, 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 whether he's been coaching or as a player himself. So um, we're really, really excited to have him on board. Um, I know from a coaching perspective and our staff are really excited to have him on board and um, you know, we look forward to good times ahead as, uh, as we head into the future. So we'll hand across to Craig, to uh, the person that you're all looking forward to hearing from. So over to you, Craig, and again, congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, I'm pretty pumped. <laughs> Let's face it, this is, um, this is a significant part of my journey, and it's been a long one. Um, I'd like to thank Graham and, and you also, Mark, for, and the subcommittee of Paul LeCurie and Luke Ball and, and Peter Murphy, um, and then the, the board, obviously, to, to believing in me to take this club forward. Um, it was an extensive process. It didn't make it easy for me. It, it went for about six to eight weeks, six or eight weeks, but um, it did allow me to reflect on on my journey. And um, it's been a long one. This one's been, you know, 15 years coaching and and the ability to, uh, you know, be resilient and and struggle and get up, fall over, get up, you know, get up again. I was only sharing a story just before our um, sliding door moments of leaving one club and getting an opportunity to others has been significant in, in my journey. So, um, yeah, I bring all that here and. I'm um, looking forward to taking this club forward, as I said. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to thank uh, the Richmond Footy Club for five great years of my life. Uh, the experiences there gained have clearly put me in this position. I'm really grateful for Peggy um, and then Brendan and Tim Livingston and, and uh, Damien and all the staff, um, particularly the players. It was a, a great time of my life. I, I feel like I'm a better person for being at that football club and a better dad and also um, a better coach for it. So thank you to the Richmond Footy Club. Um, in recent time, I, you know, Graham got me over to, to Hawthorne and again, I, I'm not sitting here without that opportunity and the ability to work under Clarko was, was amazing. He's an incredible man. Um, I've learned so much and um, yeah, he's, he's someone I'm really keen to keep, keep in contact with. And to uh, Rob McCartney and the other coaches, Brendan Bolton, Chris Newman, Andy Ott and Sam Mitchell, we, we, we coached hard this year and really confident I could get the best out of that group that we, uh, that we coached. Um, and then also to the playing group at Hawthorne, I, uh, I'll be uh, 
cheering loudly from afar, but also when you play against us, we'll, yeah, we'll probably start a few fights and tag a few. So, uh, <laughs> But I wish you all, all the best and thank you again to, um, to the Hawthorne Footy Club. Um, I'll, I'll just finish by just touching on our members. Um, you know, there's 82,000 members out there and not only with Collingwood, but also around the league that have been you know, paying a lot of money to, um, to support their clubs in the industry when it's been a difficult time. And, you know, we, I sit here and I'm really grateful and thankful for those people that have um, yeah, continued to support our club um, without even being able to go to the games. I'm looking to, um, it's going to be difficult to, to please all of you at the same time. Um, but I just want to make sure that uh, you understand we're, working, we're going to work really hard to develop winning habits and behaviours that you'll be really proud of us, win, lose or draw, the way we go about it. So um, I'm really grateful for this opportunity. Thanks again for, for putting me in this chair and I, I'm looking forward to getting to work and making this club rise up the ladder like we want it to do. Um, Craig, first of all, uh, congratulations and uh, uh, congratulations on the appointment and also the, the elevation in your career, which you've obviously worked really hard for. Um, uh, COVID, of course, uh, responsible for the uh, the understated appointment by Collingwood. Now, does that suit you, though? I mean, as uh, we heard, you're a, a calm sort of a character there. Are you happy to sort of dispense with the hoopla that we normally see the Collingwood coaching announcement and, and do it this way? Well, yeah, to be honest, um, I'm, not a, I'm not a star of the game, retiring great, um, a big name if you like, but I wouldn't want it any other way. This is, um, this is my journey, it's my story. Um, all the resilience along the way and the, and the hardship and, and then all the successes, it's shaped me to be the person I am. And um, yeah, I sit here really comfortable in the seat just to, um, to be the best person for the job. Do you see this as a, a long-term project? Um, and, and, and how many... Um uh, how many seasons do you think it's going to be before this group in front of you can peak and, and push back up the ladder? Well, we're, we're, we're in the position to just get, get as good as we can, as quick as we can. We don't want to put a ceiling on that. Um, yet the reality is that we're, we, we're going to get younger uh, in, in recent times and um, we're looking forward to just getting my hands dirty. I spoke to the playing group before. My, my appointment offers opportunity and, and, and um, possibility, so we're looking forward to whatever that looks like and the players have been, now go away and come back and they've got a choice now, so we can get um, as good as we can, as quick as we can, that's our goal. Hey, Michael, you, uh, um, sorry, I was going to say, do you think there is, is going to be a bit more um, of a development phase in, in the first, um, at least, season of your time at Collingwood? Well, I think we're all aligned in knowing that we've, we've got some work to do to get up the ladder, so, um, you know, in terms of the language you want to use, that's your language, we just want to get as, uh, as good as we can, as quick as we can. Craig, Michael Gleeson from the Age. Um, what style of coach will you be? I mean, we talk about relationships and connection and that sort of thing, but what will your game look like? Well, I'd like to think that we're going to be uh, a player style that the fans will be proud of. Uh, you know, in terms of watching recent uh, games of the finals, are all everyone played a little bit different. So I'm, I'm sitting back at the minute looking at you know, the best versions of every team and th th seeing the things we can implement in our game plan. I'm certain that we'll, we'll improve our contest. That's something, you know, watching from afar, I'm, I'm keen to implement. Um, and I want to play an exciting brand that the fans will be happy to come watch and cheer, cheer us loud. Craig, uh, uh, Nick Butler from 10. The relationship uh, building side of your coaching, um, how did you become that? How did, how did you hone those skills? I'm not knocking over my water. That was that, that's certainly not one of them. <laughs> um, oh, look, it's just been myself. Just create great relationships, show respect for all people. Um, got great values, high morals. Um, yeah, I, I just respect everybody the same, regardless uh, of your status in the game or your background. I don't, I don't particularly care. I, I'll treat the, um, the property steward as, as much as I, the same way I treat Mark. Um, that's just the person I am, and you know, build good relationships so then you can have strong conversations and. Um, show a level of care, and, and that's the person I am. And are you confident that that uh, translates into good performance and, and kicking goals on Saturdays? It's worked okay so far. <laughs> well said. Craig, right, clear on from the age. What's, um, when you look at Collingwood or when you're determining whether to throw your hand in the ring, what do you think the biggest challenge you face to get them up the ladder again? Oh, well, when Graham rang me and, and um, yeah, asked me whether I was interested in going through the process, uh, initially I was sort of just um and whether that was 
the direction I wanted to go in, at that moment. Um, you know, just making sure all the all the balls are aligned in, in terms of my private life and and work life and balance and things like that. And um, once I reflected, I just thought this opportunity. This is such an amazing football club. Having been here for five years and seeing what this club is capable of at its best, I, I saw a great possibility. And um, and then when Graham sent me the brief, um, I just thought everything that I I, um, I am as a person, as a coach, it just fit the brief. So um, yeah, then I just had a, had a crack at it. Great, congratulations. It's Jay Clark here from the Herald Sun. Um, mate, job well done. Um, what was Alistair Clarkson's advice? Did you have much of a discussion with Clark about this? Yeah, he's been an enormous asset all year, um, particularly when the process was starting to heat up. Just the little things, he just... Um, oh, look, having worked with Clark, I, I saw a whole other level of, of um, care for his players. And, and you know, as I've said here, I'm, I'm proud of the coach I've been and I'm always trying to evolve. I'm not a finished product, I want to get better. Um, but watching Clarko, the way he, he cared about his people, um, you know, just, just the family even, like just the way he embraced you know, my young family into his life and um, he's an inspiration. I, 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 if I can be half the coach he is or was, um, he'd be really proud. And um, I did have a, a joking conversation with him. If he's not doing it next year, I'm happy to get him over to our stoppages, but <laughs> he, uh, he laughed at that. I don't, don't think that's going to happen. <coughs> Craig Jordan from Radio 3AW, um, what's your initial assessment of the Collingwood playing list and um, what sort of players do you think you need to add? Yeah, I went through that um, part of the process and I think there's a couple of little holes. I, I think if, you know, in our structure, I'm not going to go into those in details now, but um, yeah, we, we've got a period now we can sit back. I, you know, I've only spoken to the playing group only half an hour ago, so I, I don't know everyone in, intimately enough, but. Yeah, we've got some work to do. We're, we're not happy where we are on the ladder. We want to get better. And um, yeah, we'll find some opportunities with, within that trade period or, or draft to, to um, you know, get those areas um, amended as best we can. Okay. Sorry, Tony, go. Oh, sorry, uh, so Tony Jones again from Nine Craig. Um, I was just going to ask you, I'm just trying to get a handle on uh, Craig and Craig here at the moment. So what we're seeing at the moment, obviously it's a pretty nervous occasion for you. Um, are you always this measured, or can the media expect you know, a bit of grumpiness from time to time? Like, who's the real pragmatist? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get grumpy. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> now, this, this, like, like I said, this, there's 82,000 supporters in our and members in our group and um, for our club, and you can't keep everyone happy. I, I understand that. I'm, one thing you'll know from me, Tony, is that I'm happy to uh, to, to take the blows and, and be accountable to to our actions, the way we're playing. Um, but when we start winning. Uh, I'm, I'll be quickly passing the buck to others, and, and it's a collective. Uh, this is—it's easy to sit here and say it's a one-person job. It's just—that's just not reality. Um, football clubs are built on, on many numbers and many people, and um, yeah, you know, I'm a cultural builder. I'm, I'm good with people, um, and yeah, you know, that's the club that we, we'll, we'll be forging forward with. Um, those lions signings that you made in were ruthless. Is there an aspect of that in your coaching? Yes. And the hard edge that we've spoken about the relationships and the teaching. I mean, you've come up under Walsey and Lee. Is there a time when when you need to, to use the stick rather than the, the carrot in your coaching as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's the basis of building strong relationships. It gives it, it those conversations become easy. Um, you know, when you've got a relationship to a level where you just go, Mate, what you're doing right now doesn't suit the, the Collingwood Football Club. Um, we need to get better in this area. Um, I'm a rewarder. I, I like to you know, you know, water what we want to grow. I spoke to the playing group before about certain things that we want to see in place straight away when we get back. Um, some of them put their hand up, said, you know, there's, there's things they want to make sure they do when they get back, and we'll hold them to account to that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get them to honour their word. Right, Mitch Cleary from AFL.com.au. You spoke about Clark and the words. Um, how much did you have to, to say or we'll chat with Lee and Dimmer through this process as well? Yeah, Lee, Lee said some kind words about me in the press, which I have made sure I acknowledge. And um, yeah, he's he's to be honest, and I said this in in the the process that Lee's like a father now, and he probably won't like hearing that, but um, just such a great mentor. He shaped me so much in my career as a player, and and then you know even just the the words he said the other day, I I text him and he texts back, and if there's anything. 
you know, he can help me with this. He said he'd be there for me. So it's really nice to have someone of his calibre. And, uh, and to be honest, a lot of my coaching um, stems from Lee's principles. And um, yeah, I think you'll see a lot of that in my, the playing group. Well, anyway. And just from your time at Collingwood, uh, a lot of the leaders in terms of the playing group are still there. Scott Pendlebury, still side bottom. Did you touch or well, um, reach out to those guys uh, throughout the process? No, I didn't. No, I stayed away from that initially. Um, you know, Pendles was the first guy I saw on, on the way in, and you know, he's got a big part to play. I, I, I mentioned in front of everyone that um, I would use Pendles as an example to all the other players that I that I coach in other clubs about the professionalism, and the level of of detail we put into his game, and um, he's going to be integral in developing this young group. So I, I'm organising to catch up with all the players one on one in the next period and get to know them at a deeper level. Right, Ashley, Brad, I don't record. Oh, you go, Andrew. Sorry, Ashley, Brad, I record. Great big club Collingwood. How are you going to deal with the white noise that inevitably surrounds Collingwood, particularly after a couple of losses? Yeah, it's all part of the struggle, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think that's part of that makes the winning so much, so much more enjoyable. Um, yeah, I was at, at Richmond Footy Club when there was a lot of noise um, when things weren't performing, and, and they could turn that around quickly. I, I think it's just worrying about what you can control. And it's, a, it's an old cliche, but that's that's reality. Um, I'm here to coach the football club um, and make everyone better as quick as we can, and, and that's where I put my energy. Craig, uh, Andrew from Seven. Did you have any reservations about the role, given the uncertainty um, at board level? Uh, having spoken to Graham, it, it, it did um, make the, the opportunity to come aboard a lot easier um, in terms of just what, what's going on externally. And when you actually get some of the details involved of what's going on, um, yeah, I, I had comfort coming in to, to go for the position. I'll use a Lee Matthews um, phrase he used when, when he first got to, to, to Brisbane. He said, uh, players will play, coaches will coach, and administrators will administer. And, and I'm here to coach the team. Did you like that, Lee? So that was a pretty good Lee. <laughs> yeah, but, but, I mean, if there's a new board that comes in, I mean, uh, are you confident that they're going to be just as aligned with you as the current board? Yeah, I'm led to believe that's the case, and I'm, I'm, I have great confidence sitting here that that's, that's going to be executed. Craig, uh, Mitch Cleary again. Uh, just, can you just confirm that the length of tenure is a three-year deal? And, and secondly, um, the people around you, Justin Lepich, and what role he will play, and um, how many of the remaining uh, assistant coaches will, will stay? Scott Sell will be under Sam's contract, and how many of those will uh, remain with you on, on the panel? Yeah, at this stage, I haven't signed the contract, right? It's <laughs> yeah, it's getting close, but it's a, at, at this stage, it's a three-year offer. And, um, yeah, in terms of bringing other people in, uh, I, I've, this is one of the exciting parts of this opportunity is that you get to you know, build a really good team around you, not only the playing group and start and build a culture, but to build a great team around that we can start together. And, um, you know, Justin Lepper's a great friend of mine. I, I just want to say and make it pretty clear that I'm not just going to bring my best mates in. That's just not how, how I operate. I want a diverse coaching group. I want the best people in, in their roles. Um, you know, I, having said that, Lepper's the best I've seen, best I've worked with in his defensive structure. He's an elite coach. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to start conversations with him and, and see where that goes. And, but again, we're going to maybe two or three other additions that will find the best available in the country to make this group better. Craig, uh, Tony Jones again. Um, can I just ask you um, uh, any concerns at all about what appears to be a looming battle to the man sitting on your left, Mark Porter? No. That never, that never came into calculations at all when you were weighing up whether to jump on board a club that might be a little destabilised at the moment in terms of its administration because of this looming threat or genuine threat? No. You don't want to elaborate a little on that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just one for Graham, uh, if we can. How important was the year and the approach to, to Craig 12 months ago to get into Hawthorne and what you saw um, to, to uh, sort of push his name forward to the board? Uh, yeah, well, I actually was part of getting Craig across to Hawthorne, but then I'd left Hawthorne before he'd really started. So he was, um, I think we we're a couple of weeks in. So I really, 
um, had minimal time with him, um, but heard you know, really good things through the Richmond people. That's why we were keen to get him across to Hawthorne. Um, and I've heard really good things from the Hawthorne people. So from that perspective, we didn't actually work together other than a couple of weeks, basically. Um, but overall, uh, yeah, it was uh, it played a small role in it. But, yeah. A uh, question for Mark, if I can. Um, Mark, what is the situation um, with the looming uh, board challenge and how confident are you of being able to remain in the position? Um, thanks for the question. Listen, we've brought forward the AGM from February to December, so obviously the members will get to, to vote on the board, so um, that's where we are at the moment. And I think we should just concentrate this press conference on celebrating Craig's appointment, which is fantastic. Yeah, and certainly I think that um, the media will, will do that. There is a healthy level of respect there, but there is also obviously a pretty big situation um, with the board. What is your message to all the Collingwood members? Um, the members will get to have a vote on the 16th of December about the board that they want for the Collingwood Football Club. It's as simple as that. And you want to re remain in the position? Um, that the members will vote in the board and the, vo the board then votes the president. So that's where we are and that's the process that we shall follow. Thank you. Do you think that's... Oh. Actually, Craig, Craig, Andrew, Christian, I just ask one more about that. Um, the leadership you spoke of with Scott Pemberbury, how he's such a great example to follow. There are a couple of guys who are uh, putting their hands up in terms of the, the right time to perhaps um, hand that role over of captaincy. Do you, do you see that as, a, as um, maybe a symbolic way to, to start your, your journey here at Collingwood in perhaps handing that over? Well, I'm not sure about that. I, you know, I want to chat to Pendles. As I said, I'm, he's, he's the first person I want to talk to. And... Um, you know, get a gauge for where he's at in, in that part of his career and um, you know, we'll make a decision based around what, what he wants to do. I think that he's been an incredible player for this footy club for a long time and I think he has the right to decide um, what he wants to do around that space. Righty, just on that, uh, Tom Brown from Seven, uh, regarding Pendle's contract, obviously there was that radio interview, I think it was on Triple M, there was some discussion around that a couple of weeks ago with Pendle's tried to clear up. Could you just uh, explain that from your perspective and how close it is to a, a new deal, please? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I, I saw uh, what was written and um, when you actually hear what was said, it was it was a little bit different in, in the context of it, but I think he came out and cleared that up that you know, he wants to uh, be a, a lifelong Collingwood player, um, whether that be one year, two, three, um, but from that perspective we're pretty close to that and we've been really open and honest uh, together that he feels as though his journey in coaching will probably be away from here um, once his playing career finishes. And, and I think that's a great thing that, uh, that he's able to um, go out and see another, another system or another club um, when the time's right. But, you know, he's certainly a coach in waiting and, uh, yeah, but hopefully he's got a few years left playing. And just one more for me, um, righty on the left part. Is it possible that you could have a hybrid coaching in this role? There's obviously a list vacancy at the moment and potentially vacancies across the assistant coaching board. Is that like a, a fill-up or an incentive that you could offer Leopard, both those, those parts? Uh, I think the, the short answer would be no. Um, uh, we'd certainly value Leper if, if he was to come across to us. We'd uh, value his input into that. He's got great experience. He's been a senior coach himself. Um, being part of, of great clubs and you know, listening to him on the radio, I think everyone would agree he's a great media performer and he's able to actually express what's happening in the game and understands players really well. So having him involved in that I think would be a great thing. But... Um, as I said, we, we just haven't got down that path far enough yet to, to make decisions on, uh, on who will come in. Thanks, Ray. And Graham, uh, Rob Harvey has already departed. Will, that, will this appointment see Brent Sanderson leave as well as an assistant coach? From a coaching perspective, yeah, it, it, uh, it looks like Sando will um, finish up with us as an assistant. Um, we are exploring with him what um, else might be available with us and, and we'll work that or we'll work through that in the next few weeks. So is that a potential list role or development? Can you take us welfare or what that looks like? Uh, we're exploring that right now. Thanks, Ray.
Um, so th- th- there's a, he could go across a number of areas, and you know he's an experienced football guy who's who's given great service to the club, um, like Robert Harvey. So we'll explore that and and see where that goes. Can I just ask? Uh, can I just ask Craig again? Um, uh, his social media accounts uh, over the journey have expressed quite a bit of love for the Mason Cox. Um, is that going to extend into a new contract for him? Well, again, he's, I've got to catch, he's going back to the States on Friday. Um, yeah, I'm keen to have a conversation with him. But again, what's best for the footy club is, is paramount. And you know, I need to talk with Roddy and Derek Heiner around what, uh, what his contract status is and where that fits. So there's a bit to play out on that. Craig, you heard from Nathan Buckley. Any messages of congratulations? No, I haven't. Um, but I think I've got a shirt on because it's really... It, it fits me well. In, um, but I, I, look, I, I work with Bucks. Um, yeah, he, he was a terrific um, asset to me when I was developing my, my craft. And, um, yeah, I, I've got nothing but respect for Bucks. And, yeah, I look forward to catching up with you soon. Craig, you spoke about the contest being an emphasis when you take over. What about Collingwood scoring wise? Do you think, um, how do you solve the balance between attack and defence? Well, look, I, I'm, I'm remiss to, to question or challenge what was. And, you know, this is a time where I can, I'm going to get all the information given to me um, by the other coaches in the coming days about what, what's worked and what hasn't worked. Um, there's been an extensive re- review done already, so I'm going to get all that information. But what I'll say is that um, 18th for inside 50s is not the, the team we want to be. So we're going to have to do some stuff in, in regards to that and then you know, the contest is a big part of that so we want, to, we want to increase our opportunity to get the ball inside 50 like everyone does and then give us the best the best way to score from that Craig just on that uh, Jordan Jagali obviously had a great second half of the year and looked to work really well under Robert Harvey have you sort of worked with Jordy or come across him in your travels? No only briefly when I, when I was first year he, he started so it was very brief um, like he's a quality player of the competition isn't it so we want to get the best out of all our players and um, you know, finding the right balance of his midfield and forward and, and then having, again, I need to have a conversation with him. And, um, but he gets an opportunity to come back like all other players and first day of pre-season and make a choice of what sort of play he wants to be for us. If there's no more questions, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.